People often ask to have a look at my studio. Well, this is it. Um, well, actually, no, it's not. Maybe this is it. Uh, yeah, could be. Don't mind that one. That was pretty nice. I could go with that. But unfortunately, it's not. This is my studio here. <laughs> Everything I need to paint is in this Harry Potter Hogwarts bag. So good old Harry Potter has been kind to me. Everything I need is in this bag. Let me explain how I work with this. So. As you can see, I've got my Harry Potter Hogwarts Express bag, which I purchased in London. And um, I'm going to have to flip this video around so as I record it, it's going to pick back to the front. So one of the key things in this bag I've got is this. And this is a, a palette. So basically, I don't use um, a wooden palette. I use a tear-off palette. And these are really good, actually. You can buy these probably in most uh, art stores or craft shops. And they're just... Um, kind of pages that you tear off basically they're kind of wax finished and the paint will stay dry on quite a long time Whatever kind of paint you use will stay dry and usable for a long time so they're quite good next thing i've got in here is uh one of my trusty beakers great to draw circles with don't use a, a compass or anything i've got a couple of these in here but this is a small one so if you've seen some of the other works you'll you'll see it's a great size to use always very useful one of the other things, of course, I've got is uh, a little mixing palette here. I usually buy these plastic ones and stuck together, but um, great. I mean, they're supposed to be disposable, but I tend to hang on to these for years, to be honest. If you are going to use these, tend to use the same colours in each palette so you don't contaminate with anything like that. Even though these are really dry, sometimes when you put water in them, you do get a, a kind of a bit of a wash off the previous one. So, um, yeah, so always keep colours, same colours in each individual one doesn't really matter what way you put them in to be honest whatever you feel comfortable with other people will say you have to put them in a particular rotation I say go with whatever you feel so those are quite useful a deeper one as well is quite useful mixing more paints uh, this is a deeper one so that's quite handy if you get more paint in it the other thing that is really useful is uh, masking tape I don't know what you call it in other places around the world um, Traditionally, it's used for like decorate. It's a bit similar to duct tape, if you're familiar with that. So basically, it's a kind of a sort of semi-stretchy tape, really. It, it does does stick, but it doesn't stick too much. So if you want to put this on a canvas or on a piece of paper to mask off an area that you don't want covered in paint, it's great. You can just put it on, tear it with your, your hands. You don't need scissors or anything like that. And uh, really useful, really useful thing to have. Get these in lots of different sizes. This is quite a thin one, but you can get them really, really thick. So masking tape, that sort of masking tape, we call it in the UK. I don't know what you call it, other places. Um, this isn't actually anything I use to paint, but it, as with all creative people, we have our sort of weird lucky charms and things. I've got a little painting Mickey here, if you can see that. So um, if you're familiar with my, my photos on Instagram, Mickey nearly always makes an appearance. And I found Mickey in a car park many, many years ago. Um, I opened my door one day and I was going shopping and poor old thing, he was just on the ground all getting soaking wet in the rain. There was nobody else around and I thought, well, why not? I'll rescue him. So I've rescued him and he's always been a painting partner of mine. He always sits on my table when I paint. One of the other things, this is a weird one, but it's a very useful thing to have uh, on standby actually. Um, toilet roll. Or if you're in the UK, a loo roll. <laughs> it's going to be common. So basically, and I learned this one actually from Nancy Kaminsky, one of the great kind of TV painters years and years ago. She always used to have a uh, toilet roll. And it's so useful to have on standby. To, even if you don't think you're going to use it, just have it on the table next to you or somewhere because you don't know the amount of times I've spilt water, spilt paint, splashed something. You've got it there to hand to mop up straight away. And, of course, also you can use it as part of the actual process of painting to dab on stuff and, and things like that. So it's a very, very useful thing to have. Sponges. Now, these are natural sponges I've got here. So these are two of my natural sponges. I pick up these, well, I used to get them on eBay, to be honest. They used to be really, really um, quite quite cheap. I mean, these days, they're probably quite expensive. But you can get them, you know, like a pack of six, something like that. Get them in different kind of uh, textures. These are quite large ones with big spaces. And they're, they're fantastic. Now, the weird thing about natural sponges is as soon as you start to wet them, they would disappear. They really, really go really tight and really really squishy just like, like you expect but unlike a man-made sponge 
you can actually rinse it under tap. I and mean, if you, I use watercolour and I mainly use acrylic, you can rinse the paint and you'll find it will come out absolutely clean. You won't get any residue left on an actual sponge. Whereas if you use a man-made one, this is one that I've, I haven't actually used this, but I've kind of chopped them up. If you use a man-made one, you will get residue and you're really stuck with that kind of consistency really tight. So, you know, if you want to use like a fruit texturing or anything like that, a natural one is always 10 times better. So always use natural sponge if you can. Palette knife, always useful. I don't spend a lot of money on palette knives. I've got a couple here that I've probably had for about 10 years now. Uh, wooden handle one with a, a metal uh, blade to it. Um, a nice sharp one. Look after your palette knife. Don't get it bent or anything like that, otherwise you can't really use it. But um, palette knife don't really cost much money. Avoid the disposable ones, the plastic ones, because they're horrible. And in all honesty, it doesn't do the environment any good anyway, just plastic. So get a wooden handled one and uh, with a nice metal blade. It will last you for years. This is another useful thing, a couple of useful things. Ruler goes without saying. Basic ruler is very useful. Now, this is, a, this is an interesting one. This is like a roller ruler. So if I can show you this, if you want to measure something, if you want to use this on a, a piece of paper, you can actually set the rule here to whatever dimension you want. And as you roll down, you can see the measurements. So as you roll down there, it'll actually measure how far you've gone down the page. So that's really, really useful. So you can keep a nice straight line. If you want to do parallel lines, really, really good. And you see it's got, the, it's got like a roll on it there with the dimensions and the, the um, what's the word? I don't know gravitations or whatever there we go so that's kind of quite useful i've got a big one and a small one pencil case uh seems pretty basic but a see-through pencil case is really really useful for the main reason that you can actually see what's in the blooming thing you know so many times you get all these fancy pencil cases which are great but if you can't see what's in it and you've got a bag full of stuff and you're looking for something it really is so so useful so in here i'll keep uh, a couple of like very light marker pens in particular, I will keep uh, usually some pencils, uh, some pencil leads, because I tend to use mechanical pencils, pencil leads, so it keeps everything nice and safe. I'll keep um, a rubber, or you put it that, a razor. If in America, rubber means can mean something very different, but we won't go into that. Um, so I'll keep that pencil sharpener, all useful stuff. The other thing I've got in here, and these are really good actually, these are old ones. But um, I use a pack, always have a pack of Faber Castell black marker pens. These are my old ones, but they're quite, even old ones are quite useful where they're kind of worn out and they're not um, quite as dark as you want them because you can use them for shading and sketchy kind of stuff. Faber Castell, really, really good make. They're, they're not cheap, but you get a pack of these and they last you a good couple of years. So they're quite useful. Pair of scissors, always handy if you're doing collage work, stuff like that. Next thing I always have to hand is a Stanley knife. Stanley knife is so, so useful, but be very, very careful with this because it is a very, very sharp blade. So just a tip for you, if ever you're using a knife like this or a craft knife, it ideally needs a retractable blade like this. So always, always have the blade retracted back so it's nice and safe after you've used the blade. But really essential piece of kit. Um, you know, even if you want to cut something out for collage or even want to sharpen your pencil if you can't find your pencil sharpener, anything like that, really useful thing to have. And also you can use it for your masking tape as well. Lots and lots of tubes of paint. I've got um, System 3 by De La Roni here. Even when I've used paint, I usually, if there's a colour particularly like, like this one, this cerulean blue, I really love this colour. So I'll keep the old, um, the old tube there so I can always go back and um, have a look at that. Uh, a plug-in night light, don't ask me what that's doing, I've no idea what that's doing in there. Um, some metallic paints which I've got, oh these were really good, I found these in an art shop going back a little while ago. If you're in the UK, Jackson's are quite good, they're a good art store in the UK. Um, and they are actually, I've never seen them before, they're called Jelly Roll Bright White Pens. So basically so it's a rollerball pen, so this is going to be back to front, it's a rollerball pen but it's white ink. And um, I'd never seen white ink before. Didn't even know you could get white ink. So you can do like negatives kind of thing. So if you've got a black, um, a black board or something, you can use these to draw them with white. They come in different, uh, different thicknesses, nibs. So really nice. 
quite good fun using them and I've used them a few times. Um, umpteen pencils in here floating around. These are quite useful things to have. So when you buy your canvases, often you'll get these stuck, these wedges stuck pre-done in the corner of your canvas. They're stretchers basically. Nine times out of ten, I don't usually need to use stretchers, but it's always handy to have a spare packet just in case at the end of something you find your canvas has sagged a little bit and then you can restretch it. Um, if you ever have a canvas before you start painting it, a stretch canvas that has sagged or got any dents in it, a little tip for you, soak the back of it with water, and I mean a lot of water. You can run it under the tap, run it under the faucet, and you can soak the, the underside of the canvas with water. Tip it up, get rid of the excess water, let it dry naturally, or if you want, you can let it dry. Um, you can use a hairdryer to dry it off if you want, if you're stuck for time, and the dent will actually come out. So good tip for you there, because often stores sell off canvases which have got dents in them, and they're absolutely fine. You can get rid of those, no problem. But I think those are the main things. The rest of the stuff in here is just going to be lots and lots of paints. So, um, yeah, so I think that is what is in the bag. Always useful to have a bag like this. So at the end of the day, end of your painting session, you can put everything into it if you need to, clear your table, and you're not gonna go around searching around for stuff, thinking, ooh, I had, I had a brush or I had a paint there. Actually, I don't keep brushes in it because the brushes wouldn't do very good. Brushes are always put in a pot, stand, end up. Another tip for you, if you're using watercolors or you're using acrylics, always wash your brushes in cold water. Um, I once was chatting to quite an established artist and he was complaining that his brushes were getting very clogged. And I said, well, what are you, what are you rinsing your acrylic in? What are you rinsing the brushes in? And he said, well, warm water and soap. I said, well, if you use warm water, it's, it's going to solidif solidify the paint on there. So it's cold, cold water. Uh, I just use water. You can get soap, like a, a soap bar to actually do it. Personally, I've never felt the need for that. And I think it's a bit unnecessary. But if you want to keep brushes absolutely pristine, you could do that. I always use just water. So there we go. So that's a quick look in the Harry Potter Hogwarts Express bag. So I think um, that might have answered a few questions for some people. But yeah, just a useful thing to have really. So I hope you found that interesting, a few tips and tricks along the way. So thanks a lot for sticking with me. If you got this far, well done. And um, I shall see you in the next video. If you'd be kind enough to give it a thumbs up, it'd be great. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please do so. It doesn't cost anything and you can get notifications, like I said, as and when you want. You don't have to get notifications, so you can choose exactly what you want to get. So you're not going to be bombarded because you will get enough rubbish now, boxes and things as it is, and beeps and bombs on our phones. So there we go. So thanks a lot for your time. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next video. You take care now. Bye bye.